Hello and welcome back. I'm Steven, your host, and this is our part three to our aviation data NIFI workflow. So on our last video, we went ahead and finished up the split JSON, the jolt transform we did, and we converted it back to SQL so we could put it into the database. And that worked just fine, right? We saw the example of the data. We were able to switch over to it. We can see data looks great. It's all in there the way we intend it to be. So we're good to go. Let's work on though, I said we'd talk about, or we'd go over another way that we could do this a little bit different from here down. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that. We're gonna move this control right up here, to get things moved around a little bit. Okay, so what we could do is what's known, we haven't talked about this processor before, uh, actually, we've used it for other stuff before, but here's a different way we can use it as well. So one thing we want to, uh, I'm going to bring out is the evaluate JSON. And I think we've used it in another video before. Uh, where did it go? Oh, eval. Evaluate JSON path. And we're going to be working with this one to get to the same place where we can get the data and put it into our, into our server. And into our table. Now, the way we do this will be different because we're gonna skip the entire JSON transform part and get them a little bit differently. And it may seem like more work, or it may, if you test them, like one could be more advantageous over the other. So the next part we need to do is we, in order to do this, what we need is the path to all the uh, the JSON that we're the values that we're trying to get to, right? And we have to know the JSON tree structure in order to get to it. So one thing that can be kind of helpful, and this is actually good for other things too, but um, let's take a new processor out, and this one is called flatten JSON. So there might be cases where you wanna take JSON and you kinda of wanna flatten it out, right? Get rid of those arrays and just flat that thing down. So we'll move this over here real quick, we'll feed into that. We're not gonna keep it permanently, but we can use it to take a look at what it looks like when we are using it and what the JSON looks like for what we're trying to get to. Because uh, back here at the split, I showed you that we wanted to split on data, right? But um, maybe you don't know what it looks, or what you should do with the JSON in order to get to the array data and stuff like that. So we're gonna use this flat JSON to give us an idea. So under keep array flat mode, we want to go to dot notation in this case. We also have the option to keep the array or go to normal. Uh, every object is a single level JSON. And in here we have conf conformers of MongoDB dot notation to, uh, to update also nested documents. Okay, so I wanna keep that one in this case. Separator is gonna be a period. We need to put the file someplace real quick or connect it so it will work. Set the failure to terminate. Everything else is good. And actually we, yeah, we'll sit in all 100 this way for right now. It's a little messy, but that's okay. So we'll turn the control on. Stop it right here. No, dang it, didn't stop it in time. Okay, we got 100, we're done there. We'll end up producing probably a little bit more, but that's all right. So we have 100 ready in this split over here that can go into our flatten. Let's go ahead and take the flatten, set it up for 10 seconds, one each. Go ahead and start it, we get one done. Now we can go look at what it did when it flattened this. Format it, and there we go. So kind of looks similar to some of the other stuff we were looked at, but if you take another look at it, you see we kept departure. Departure is listed in front of everything. And then we have dot airport, time zone, and so forth. And what this is doing, like I said, right, it flattened it out. And in order to flatten it out, it's showing us, well, Everything over here is underneath the departure tree. Everything over here is underneath the arrival, flight, aircraft, and live. And this will be helpful because this shows us the path also to get to the value we're trying to get. And in this case, one of the values we want to get to is the flight date. So flight date, it's just flight date. Uh, but when it comes to say departure airport, we need the path for that one, which is gonna be this guy right here, this part of it. 
And what we'll do is in front of it, we'll put a uh, dollar sign with another period. And that will let us specify the exact value we're trying to get to. So that's what it looks like when you flatten it out and how it looks when you need to utilize them too or call upon them. So we don't need that. It's just an example of what it looks like. So let's clean this up real quick and get to work on creating this flow. Oh, stop this one. Don't need to keep this around, but we do need to empty this queue. Okay, back to our evaluate now. So this is our other direction we're going to take this. So this is another way we can get to the same point. We'll connect the split to that one for the relationship. Uh, after this, we're going to want to do attributes to JSON. That's the wrap, that's the way I'm going to do it this time. So we see it's the third one from the top. We'll connect that relationship for matched in this case. So anything that match goes into the match relationship from the evaluate is what we're going to bring over. And then over here, let's go ahead and set this evaluate JSON up. So we are going to go settings, failures, we don't have to key, we don't care about anything that doesn't match. Uh, setting or schedules, still zero seconds. And what we want to do is write all these to, well, there's actually two ways we could do it. We can write them directly to the content or we can write it to the attribute. So let's go ahead and write it to the attribute or to a attribute. Everything else is going to be the same. And now we can go ahead and say and start adding the attributes we want. So I've already got some of them picked out or the ones we want picked out. And that is going to be, we're just going to name them flight date. And then the path to that one is dollar sign period flight date. That one's pretty simple. So is this one flight status. And then we have some more complex ones. Departure airport. And I'm just gonna run through these real quick. We are back. So I went ahead and uh, filled that out because it does take a little bit of time to go through every single one. I made sure, the way I did mine though, was uh, I went back and relabeled them. And I label, I had to make sure I labeled them to keep it simple for myself later. I labeled them the same names that I'm using inside the database. So if we jump over there real quick, we can see we have flight date, flight status, depth airport, depth time. So keeping it the same will actually make it a little bit, take care of the headaches that we might have later. And then we pointed directly to all of them. So yeah, this way, making this takes a little bit more time, right? I mean, the first time you make it, it's going to take some time. But once you've got it made, I mean, you don't have to do anything else, right? It's there, it's there, and it's done. It's not like you have to keep doing it. Okay, so that's done. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. And for the next step, we are going to use the attribute to JSON. So let's go ahead and set this one up. Get rid of the failure. Keep the success. Scheduling is fine. And what we need to provide, if we look at it, it says a common separated list of attributes to be included in Expression language is not supported in this field. So we need to provide a comma separated list of all of our attribute names, which are the same as our columns as we set them up inside of our table. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that list. I've already got it set up and ready to go. Let's take a look at it, paste it in here, and here we go. All the columns we wanna have writ written to the content now. And that's what we're gonna tell it to do. So we don't need the expression. Here, the destination, we do want to be the flow file content, so it's going to create new content for it. And that's all we need to do. We could, we don't need to carry over core attributes, but we, in this case, it's not going to hurt. Say apply, that one's done. And now we move on to the next step, which is going to be the convert again. And we have our success there. Getting a little crowded because I haven't been moving these things over. S stick to what I've been doing. Get that up there. This one over here. And then we want to put. Now we could. Someone's probably asking. I can hear it. I can hear it out there being asked. Well, can't I just take this guy and point him straight into here? We can. And that would be probably the best way to do it. But ideally, you're only doing one of these paths. So for this example, I would just want to complete the entire thing out. Uh, because when... I start it, it's going to 
send files to both sides and I don't want them writing at the same time. So I just want to show that it works over here and that's the reason. Other than that, yes, we do not need to do this much extra. Let's go ahead and get that one set up. And what are you missing? Oh, the retry. Huh. Forgot about that. Didn't copy it. Okay, so it's ready to go too. So let's go back to our database. Let's do a count on everything in the table. Go ahead and run that. We have 300 in there right now for rows. Uh, we're going to stop this side just to make sure we accidentally don't put more in there. Nothing else. Perfect. What we can do, we got one queued up, so we don't have to request another one from the API and use up another uh, one of our available pools. And we can start setting it down this path. So let's go ahead and start and stop. Oh, actually, <laughs> turn this one back on. Start it. It looks like one already went. We got 100 queued up on both sides now. So you see this one and this one. So let's go ahead and look at this path down here. So JSON, let's go ahead and look at what we have before we process it. And you can see we have all the parts of the flight, right? The full departure, arrival, airline, flight, and aircraft with the live, if there was live. So this will end up making it smaller because we're, we're getting rid of the data we don't want to carry over to the database. And let's go ahead and run this and hopefully it doesn't fail. It looks like we got it all. Let's go ahead and list this and see what's different. So if we look at the content, nothing changed here. And remember that's because we're writing this into the attributes. So if we look at the flow file itself and we go to the attribute side, we can see we have, let's go find our first one, aircraft registration, which is empty in this case. Airlines is here, sky up. Uh, the airport name, terminals, so arrival terminal, arrival time zone. So it's working. We're good to go. So that means we can go ahead and take those now, take all those attributes we have, use the attributes of JSON to write into the content, overwrite the content that's there, replace it with new content. And we're going to do that. And it looks like that one's set up correctly too. Let's go ahead and verify the data and check out the content. There we go. This is exactly what it looked like when we did the Jolt as well, except uh, I'll let you judge which one you think is more work or not. I know Jolt can sometimes be a little hard to figure out the first couple of times, <laughs> but once you have it down, it's actually pretty nice and fun to use. Plus it gives you, gives you a lot of manipulation that you can do as well to the data. Why it's there, you can combine columns and stuff like that, right? You can do quite a bit with it. So for really heavy and complex stuff, the Jolt's probably the better way to go, but it is a uh, intensive processor. Uh, it can be, it's CPU, it does a lot of CPU work, but running it things through these two processors, we're, we're doing minimal work to them. We're just writing to the attributes, it takes a little memory here and there, but that's pretty quick. So it's not too bad. And then we can go ahead and start and start, make sure we don't get errors, we're good. So let's swap back over to the database and let's do our count. So 300 is what we had, 400 is what we have now. And let's go ahead and check out, make sure the data looks and is represented the same way as the earlier data. We can come down here, scroll down further. We have 400 results in here and it looks like all the data is pretty good. We're not missing any data. Oh wait. Oh, just, oh, this is, uh, yeah, so <laughs> there's a lot of information at the end. It doesn't get filled in. But what you can see, there's one difference here by doing it this way that it changed the table a little bit where the null values were being kept the other way. And if we, I think it's, uh, let me go back over here and take a look at it. So was it, <clears throat> was it this one? Yeah, here we go. So in the course of when we did this, we had the null value representation set to empty strings. So that's why we didn't write any nulls. <coughs> but the other option we had was two string null, which I believe, I don't normally use, I always leave empty string on in my case when I use this. Uh, but I think the other one just writes the word null, so it's not truly null <laughs> uh, when it processes through. So, because the string part in it, right? So I think this way, the blank is probably good enough 
You have to manage the table a little bit, maybe get rid of your nulls up above to make sure everything is blank if you wanted to, or go null out all your blanks. <clears throat> so it might require an extra step depending on how you want to tidy that data. But there we go. That is a different way using a couple different processors differently than how we went over the other side. I'll let you judge which one you like more. Uh, prefer I preferably like this route a lot more with the Jolt in this case, because like I said, the Jolt gives me ability to not only just combine like a Latin long, right? If I want to make it into what I like to call a geo string, which is Latin long together as one string, <coughs> I can do that with the Jolt and transform it there. Uh, I can also run multiple operations, multiple specs in line with each other to get a desired outcome that I'm looking for. So a lot, a lot of times, what I would do with a query record, what I could do down the uh, down line or downstream in a query record, uh, sometimes I can get away with doing a lot of that inside the Jolt without having to utilize like a query record or something like that in NiFi and use those processors. Uh, sometimes I can get away with that and just shorten up my flow. Uh, in this case, going this other route didn't, if you look. <coughs> so in this case, it still takes over here on the left side, we have the split JSON, which is one, the jolt, transform, the convert, and then the SQL. That's four processors here. To get the same, we start with the jolt, uh, the JSON split again. That's one, two, three, four, five, right? So we did have to add an extra step in here in order to accomplish what we did over here using the jolt. All right, so if you got any questions, definitely feel free, feel free to utilize that comment section down below. Throw your questions in there, something you want to add. Feel free. I don't know everything about this, but I know quite a bit. And I use it every single day. And uh, let me know if you see something differently or if there's a processor that you like the show that kind of accomplishes the same thing. We can always look at that too. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, please hit that subscribe button. It lets you know and get a notification when I put up the next video. I'm going to try to keep these at at least a minimum of one per week, maybe two on some weeks when I have a little bit extra time, and I'll do that as well. So I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one.